but we put people in different places in our heart. No two people occupy the same places in our heart. I used to get highly disappointed by people because I placed them at a certain place in my heart, whereas they have placed me in a completely different place. When the places change, you have to change your way of conduct. Assalamu alaikum. My name is Ali Hanbal. These five things have been helping me a lot. They help me because I use them as a tool to find my place in life. Why is it important to know your place in the first place? Listen to this. You know Musa alayhi salam. Like Musa alayhi salam is a great messenger. He was a great messenger. He went out with his family and with the animals. He was just looking after the herd and he saw a fire. He says, well, let me go check it out. Let me see what is going on. Musa went close to the fire and as soon as he was approaching, lo and behold, he heard a voice. Now this was the voice of the Lord himself. And he called on Musa and he said to him, now listen to this. He says, remove your shoes because you are on a sacred ground. Two things. Musa, remove your shoes because you are on a sacred ground. You have to change the way you conduct yourself. Why? Because you are on a sacred ground. Now, this is what I have realized from this. When the places change, you have to change your way of conduct. Every person you relate to have you at a different place in his heart. We don't hold the same place in people's heart. The place my mother holds in my heart is different from the place my brother holds in my heart. So we put people in different places in our heart. No two people occupy the same places in our heart. I used to get highly disappointed by people because I placed them at a certain place in my heart, whereas they have placed me in a completely different place. So they didn't find the need to actually live to my expectation. And whenever they treated me the way they should treat me, befitting of my station in their heart, I get disappointed. I have, then I have come to, I to realize and say to myself, you know what, perhaps it's, to avoid disappointment, it's important to know my place in the hearts of people. Because if I know my place in the hearts of people, I can hardly get disappointed. Because if I know my place in the hearts of people, then I know what to expect of them so that I will not expect too much of them. Hey, I know my place. I know not to expect this from you. So if you, I know my place in your heart, then I conduct myself accordingly. So I have come to understand that it is very important for me to know my place in life. Now I have done five things, five things I have come to realize that if I use them, if I observe them, then I will know exactly my place in life and in relationship. Now, I want to share with you these five things. Number one, my level of conversation. I used to have a certain kind of conversation with a certain group of people. I didn't know that those conversations really speak to my current reality because we can only have conversation about our current reality. Our realities really inform the kind of conversations that we have. My level of conversation was actually telling me that, oh my God, my reality is this. I have to change. What is it that I am having as a conversation? What sort of conversations interest me? What do I really like to talk about? Whenever we have a conversations as people, we are talking about re our realities. We are talking about our beliefs. We are talking about our ambitions. We are talking about where we want to go. We're talking about our current situation, how to navigate our ways out of that. And we, we really talk about our realities. My conversation really tells me this is my level in life. So I started watching my conversation. The moment I started to observe my level of conversation, that is the time I became conscious of what I talk about. That was the time I started to kind of disinterest myself from certain level of conversations. I started to turn away from certain conversations. The moment you introduce them, I just turn away. I just keep quiet. I just leave the place. I don't engage with you at all because these level of conversations are not the level I want to stay in. And I want to reach a certain level where I have a high level conversation, a conversation that will help me get to where I want to go. Now, this is the kind of conversation I want to have. Now, this is the beautiful thing about the conversation. You can change it. And if you change the level of conversation, then boom, your level of life will change because your level of thinking will change. It will force you to think at a different level. So I started watching out my conversations and I completely changed them because failures have conversations and winners have conversations. And these conversations are 
are not the same. Now, business owners have a conversations and employees have conversations and these conversations are not the same. All right. Now, big people have conversations and children have conversations and these conversations are not the same. First, change your level of conversation. Number two is my level of problems. What, what, what kind of problems I have on daily basis? Because we all remember when we were kids, our problems were simply different. Let's just have fun and that's it. When we were kids, our problems were different. Then we were taken to school and we started having these school problems, these lectures problems, these assignment problems, all of that. And we started having that. But then we grew and we started to have some kind of relationships and we started having God problems. We started having these teenage problems. Then we got married and then we started having these marital problems, responsibilities. And then we got children and we became fathers and the problems became that of fathers. And then the conversation keeps changing and the problems that come our way determines our level. This is what I have come to understand that, oh my God, what kind of problems am I solving on a daily basis? Because these problems really speak to my current reality. If I have small problems and I can't even solve them, then it means I'm not big enough to become a bigger man. So I have come to realize that the bigger problems I solve, the bigger person I become. The reward for your success is your next problem. So you are rewarded with a problem. So um, your level of problem really speaks to your level of life. Now, the third one is your level of friends, your friends, your friends, your friends. You see, we are supposed to grow together with our friends. If we have to maintain our friendships, then two friends will have to grow together. If one friend outgrows the other, then it's very difficult to keep the balance. It's very difficult for a person who has grown to this level to sink down just to be a friend with this loser. It's very difficult. So you see, let me just give you an example, yeah? The prophet, peace be upon him, and Abu Bakr Siddiq, they were friends for life. What happened? Because the prophet became a big man when he became a prophet. And Abu Bakr had to grow with the prophet because he had to be with him and they grew together. They grew together in faith. They grew together in journey, in adventure, in everything. That's how come they were able to maintain their friendship. What if Abu Bakr said, you know what, prophet, you just go and be your prophet. I will be here, your good friend, but I will not be by your side. I will just do my business. What do you think would happen? The conversation will not be the same. The level will not be the same. They can never remain friends. So friends will have to grow together in order to be able to maintain their friendship. One thing people do, and they try to actually make us feel guilty and bad, is do you realize when a person grows or outgrows his friend and that friend would start speaking ill of this friend, saying now he sees himself too big that he can't actually mingle with us, he can't come together with us. Now the problem with that is, or the question I want to ask is, what if you can as well lift yourself and then reach that level so you maintain yourself. Rather, you want him to pull himself down and be friends with you again. That is so difficult. It does not happen in most, in most cases. What I have decided never to do is to feel guilty about these things. If I have outgrown you, I have outgrown you. It's as simple as that. If you want to maintain our friendship, grow up. And I can't have, as an old man, have a little boy as a friend. Now, however, a little boy could be a friend with a very big man because that little boy has actually conducted himself in a very respectful manner. That's the way it is. So the little boy could raise his level and be a friend with a big man. But a big man can never sink down to be a friend of a little boy unless that boy is deserving of it. So it's just as simple as that. Your level of friends will determine your level of life. And I have come to understand that and I'm trying to maintain a good level of friendship. The fourth one is your browser history. This is something so amazing. Did you know that your browser knows you more than your partner knows you? Now, this is so crazy. Your Google Chrome, your YouTube history, your TikTok knows you more than your partner knows you because you are what you consume. You are what you watch, you are what you read, you are what you listen to. Now, these algorithms are designed in such a way that they suggest to you contents that are befitting to your search. You have searched for this so many times. So now we know what you're looking for. 
We just suggested to you. That's what YouTube does. That's what TikTok does. That's what Facebook. That's what all these things do. Now, if I open your YouTube, for example, and I see a lot of a bunch of videos, I would straight away know the kind of person you are because I would know your mindset. I will know your station. I will know your level. It is as simple as that. You can't run away from that. This is human nature we're talking about. So if you open your browser history, what is it that you search for on Google? What is What kind of video contents that you watch on YouTube? What kind of video contents that you watch on TikTok? What kind of feeds you really give your attention to on Facebook, on TikTok, on Instagram, and all of those technologies? What is it that we could find if we search you on the internet because that is where you spend most of your time you are online and we can know you by the virtue of your search history so your search this when i came to realize this it really really got me shouting my head off and i was like subhanallah this thing knows me more than my partner would ever know me because when everyone else is out that is who i am when everyone is not looking at me, that is where I am. So it knows me. Then I come to realize that my search history really tells a lot about my level in life. And then I decided, well, what if I try to upgrade this and then search better things like watch better contents on YouTube, huh? watch better contents on TikTok, watch better contents on whatever media that I want to go. Go on Spotify, listen to some high level conversations, listen to some good contents in terms of um, podcast and all of that. Because what I search is what I consume, whether text, whether it's article, whether it's a video content, whether it's an audio content, that is what I consume. And that is what ultimately becomes comes me so it tells me who i am and that is my video feed that is my history internet history period now the five and last thing is your priorities what you prioritize because there are people who actually measure on small things i have come to realize that my priorities will have to change if i have to position myself well for the kind of life that i want to have as you're listening to me, you're listening to a person who is really trying to be the better version of himself. I mean, this is what I do. I place myself in life as a, as a learner, as a seeker. So I learn, I try to better myself. I try to be free from so many things you don't understand. Now, I have to prioritize certain things. I have to prioritize certain things. And to do that, I will have to sacrifice certain things. Life is just a, a rebirth of a dead stuff. I have to kill certain things in order to make way for certain things to live in me. I have to kill certain priorities that I held dear. Now I have come to realize they are just distractions. So I have to kill those priorities in order to make way for an ultimate priority in my life. Now this required a lot, a lot of contemplation. It requires... A lot of energy from my part, but my level of priorities now have to change. I, I have to monitor my level of priorities because my level of priorities really told me like, this is where you are. You can't let go of your pettiness. That is just your level. You prioritize pettiness over greater goal. You, you prioritize quick satisfaction over your long-term success. So I have come to realize that I have to kill certain priorities and set my priorities straight. And this is something that I think has helped me find my place. And now what I'm trying to do is to navigate my way out. I really found this quite helpful. And I thought I might share with you, my friends, to see if they would help you. And I hope it will help you in your endeavor in your adventure towards true freedom, towards a good life, towards realizing yourself and your full potential in this short life. This is what I have for you tonight and I hope it has helped you. And if it has helped you in any way, please hit the subscribe button, support this, and I will deeply appreciate it. Live your life.